Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first uh, video of Chapter 10, which is Section 10.1, Use Properties of Tangents. Chapter 10 is all about circles. We're going to be learning a lot of definitions and a lot of formulas and a lot of theorems, and then we're going to apply them. As normal, Section 1 is kind of the background on circles. So a whole bunch of objectives. The first one is we're going to identify parts of a circle, like uh, the radius, the diameter, the center. Those are things that you should have talked about before. We are going to identify common tangents, those that are internal and external common tangents. We are going to determine if a segment is tangent to a circle. And then we're also going to find tangent and radius lengths using tangent properties. So as you can see from the objectives, all day today, or all video, we're learning about tangents. So first, let's do some background with some definitions. A circle is the set of all points in a plane. equidistant from the same point. And that same point is called the center. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. So we have some point, a center, and then we have all the points that are the same distance from that point. So I have a point here that's some distance away. I'm going to put another point that's the same distance away, so equidistant. So maybe it's 5 units, 10 units, 15 units, whatever it is. And as you notice, if I find all these points that are the same distance from the center, they're all some units away, 5 units, 10 units, something, I end up forming a circle. So here, here's our circle. It's all the points that are the same distance from the center. And that distance is called the radius. So the radius is the distance from center to outside of circle. So in our example, this right here is the radius. Okay, next one is a chord. A chord is a segment with endpoints on the circle. So in this case, here is a chord. It has endpoints on the circle. And it's a segment. That's really important. It's not a line. It's a segment. It have, has a beginning and an end, both the beginning and the end being on the circle. A diameter is a chord passing through the center. Okay, so chord meaning that it's a segment with endpoints on the circle. So it's going to start and end on the circle, but it also is going to pass through the center. So here is a diameter. Okay, all of those you should really have known before. The secant and the tangent are going to be the the uh, ones that are different. So a secant is a line which intersects the circle twice in two places. Whereas a tangent is a line that intersects the circle once. Okay, so in the circle we have, this would be a secant. Okay, so it's a line. It intersects in two points, once here, once here. And then a tangent would be a line that intersects the circle once. So it's going to, like, hug the side of the circle. This would be the point of intersection. So this is a tangent. One important property that you should remember from previous classes is that the radius is half the length of the diameter. So if the diameter is 10, the radius is going to be 5. So hopefully you remember that. The first example that we have is going to apply these definitions. So it says categorize each of the following as a radius, chord, diameter, secant, or tangent. So I'm going to do the first and second one with you, and you're going to do the next two. AC, so it's talking about this segment right here. 
It goes center to outside of circle, so this is called a radius. AB, so this right here, center to outside, so it crosses all the way through and goes through the center, so this one's a diameter. Pause the video and see if you can do the next two. Okay, DE is a line intersecting the circle once, so this is going to be called a tangent. And then AE is a line that intersects the circle twice, so this is going to be called a secant. Those should not have been very difficult, so hopefully you did well. Moving on, now we have example two. We are asked to find a radius and a diameter of two different circles. I'm going to do the first circle with you. You're going to do the next one. So the radius of circle A, um, radius, remember, is center to outside. So here is going to be one radius. That's three units long. If the radius is three, the diameter has to be six units long because it's double. And if we check that, going from one side of the circle to the other, going through the center, it's going to be six units. Now you answer the same two questions for so circle B, please. We should have gotten 2 and 4, so hopefully we did. Before we move on uh, to the next few examples, I want to talk a little bit about notation here. So this notation means circle with center B. So same thing, this means circle with center B. A. So if we were talking about this green circle, we would call it circle C. If we were talking about the black circle, we would call it circle D. It's always named by what point is at the center. So it's really, really important to remember, so please make sure you make a note of that. Okay, let's move on. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is intersecting coplanar circles. So coplanar just means that they are on the same plane. Okay, so if I have two circles, they could intersect zero times, they could intersect one time, or they could intersect t two times. Circles that do not intersect could look like this. They're just next to each other, they plane don't intersect. Or there could be one inside of another. Circles that intersect once could look like this, where they have one point of intersection here, or again it could be one inside of the other, but with a point of intersection. And then circles that intersect twice, you've seen this before hopefully, uh, you probably used it in an English class maybe, it's called a Venn diagram. So I have two points of intersection, one here and one here. Okay, the reason we need to know this is we're going to talk about something called common tangents. A common tangent is a, a line or segment tangent to two circles. Okay, so if I look at some of this, these previous examples, for two intersection points, for example, there's a common tangent right here. It's going to intersect once and intersect again. Okay, and then there's internal and external common tangents. So in, internal common tangent, um, it, it passes between the middle. Of the two circles. Whereas an external tangent stays on the outside. of the two circles. I know that's a little confusing, so I just think we should look at an example to see what those look like exactly. So examples three, four, and five, it says draw in the common tangents in the figures below. So for example number three, I have this tangent right here, 
I have this tangent right here. Remember these are tangents because they intersect the circle once. Um, they're common tangents because they're tangent to two different circles. These are both called external tangents, external common tangents. They stay outside of the two circles. Internal, on the other hand, would be this common tangent right here, and then this common tangent right here, because they pass in the middle of the two circles. So example three actually has four common tangents. Uh, I would like you to try examples four and five on your own, please. Draw in the common tangents, and then tell me if they're internal or external, please. Let's see how we did. For example four, you should have come up with this external tangent and this external tangent. And tricky, there's one more that goes right through the middle. And this is one is the internal. Example five, should have had one here, one here, and they are both external. So hopefully those went well for you. If not, hopefully you see what mistake you made. Okay, next we have another theorem. Um, and then we're going to do some examples. So it says a line is tangent to a circle if and only if it is perpendicular to a radius of the circle. So in the figure that we're given, we have this line M that is tangent at P. This P is actually called the point of tangency. So it's tangent at point P. We know it's tangent because it's perpendicular to a radius. So the way that we're going to see this a lot of times is we're going to be given a figure and it's going to say, is this line tangent? And we're going to have to see, is there a right angle? So let's look at what that looks like. Okay, so example number six is what I just explained. It says, in the diagram, PT is a radius of, angle of circle P. Is ST tangent to circle P? By the previous theorem, ST will be tangent if this is a right angle. So I need to determine, is that going to be a right angle? Well, I need to think. I formed a right triangle, possibly, or I really need to determine if it's a right triangle. How can I do that? Well, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I need to know, is 35 squared add 12 squared? Is that going to be equal to 37 squared? Okay, so on the left side, I get 1,369. On the right side, I get 1,369. They are equal. So we're going to say, yes, ST is tangent. Tangent because it forms a right triangle. If it, wouldn't form, if it didn't form a right triangle, like my left side and my right side were not equal, then it would not be tangent. Going off of this example is example number seven. It says in the diagram, B is a point of tangency. Find the radius of circle C. So this time we are told definitively that AB is a radius, which means that, or AB is a tangent, which means that this is a right angle. Definitively, that has to be a right angle. But now I'm asked to find the radius. Again, right triangle, so I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. My two legs are 80 and r, so I have 80 squared plus r squared equals. This is the part that, that's tricky. The entire hypotenuse is going to be 50 plus r, and then I want to square it. Left side, simplify like normal. 80 squared is going to be 6,400. r squared is going to be r squared. This is the one that's more difficult. I have to remember that when I square something, it means to multiply by itself. So I have 50 plus r multiplied by 50 plus r. Okay, so I like the box. Some of you like to use that term that's similar to aluminum that I'm not going to use. But if you want to do it that way, that's fine, or draw an arc, so that's fine. 50 multiplied by 50 is 2,500, and then I get 50r, 50r, and then r squared. So substituting that back in, I have r squared 
plus 100R plus 2,500. Initially, this looks like it's going to be pretty difficult. But what we should notice is R squared and R squareds are going to cancel. That will always be the case. R squared should always cancel itself out. Then if I subtract 2,500 from both sides, I get 3,900 equals 100 R. If I divide by 100, I get R equals 39 feet. Okay, next example I would like you to try on your own. It says in the diagram, B is a point of tangency. Find the radius of circle C. Okay, this is very similar to example seven, just new numbers. So, so take a minute, do this one on your own, please, and come back when you have finished. Okay, you should have had enough time to try this one on your own. You should have gotten, sorry, you should have gotten x to be 33. If you did not get that, you did something wrong, you need to go back and fix it. When you come to class tomorrow, I'll be checking to see that you have all the work and the correct answer for this problem. Okay, let's move on. There's one more theorem. It says, tangents from a common external point are congruent. So if we notice in the figure, we have two tangents. We have SR and ST. They come from a common external point. So all that means is they come from the same point, S. That tells us they will be congruent. So in figure number eight, it says RS is tangent to circle C and RT is tangent. Find the value of X. Okay, so I have two tangents. They come from the same external point, which means they are going to be congruent. Okay, congruent, we need to kind of jog our memories a little bit. It means they're going to be equal. So I have 28 equals 3x plus 4. Subtract 4. I have 24 equals 3x, and x equals 8. Okay, and that was the last theorem for the video. Um, we had a whole bunch of objectives, four objectives. The first one was to identify parts of circles. So we talked about secant and tangent and radius and chord. We identified common tangents, including internal and external tangents. So that's when you had two circles and you had to draw in the tangent um, that was tangent to both circles. We determined if a segment is tangent to a circle. So we used the Pythagorean theorem. And then we found tangent and radius links using tangent properties. So that would be like example 8 and then example 6 and 7. Okay, so tomorrow when you come to class, we're going to do those next two extra examples, and then we will do tomorrow's classwork. If anything in the video was unclear, or if you have any additional questions, please make sure that you write them down now. See you tomorrow.